Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to something a little bit different. News! Yes, that's right. We're going to be talking about a post released a few days ago on Steam by the Slipways developer Jakub, aka Beetlewing, that addresses, among other things, the delay to the closed beta for the game. We'll also be discussing the release date, pricing, and feature roadmap details for prior to and after launch. So first things first, if you're not sure what Slipways is, I've included a link down below in the description to the video I did a few weeks ago covering all of those details for this game as well as additional links related to the game's development, its developer, and where to find that information. So as always, I am your host with the most, The Chronic Toast, and let's dive on in. A few days ago on Friday, March 19th, 2021, for those of you watching in the future, at 10.27 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, a news update was released by the Slipways developer detailing information that the community has been eagerly awaiting. This update does not disappoint, at least for most of it. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so first off, the game release date has been uh, better defined. No longer just Q2 of this year, but specifically June 3rd for a full release, not early access. Releasing for Windows and Mac users supporting five languages at launch, English, German, French, Chinese, and Polish. This news update included additional information that the game will continue to get free updates after the release date. While not stated explicitly here, I expect that this covers patches, bug fixes, and additional features that will be added post-release. No news yet on whether planned DLC exists or what that could cover. So we have a finalized price for the game as well upon release date of $16.99 US, with adjustments uh, to this being expected for markets in non-US regions based on their local laws, exchange rates, etc. I think at least for the US, I think this price point is very on the mark and quite fair for what I've already seen and, and what is promised going forward. Just my personal opinion, this is an excellent price that will lend itself well for release as well as some sales in the future if the developer feels it's appropriate, you know, Steam Summer Sales, things like that. But last but not least, the closed beta has been delayed from April to early May. Signups are still open and anyone that previously signed up is still on the list, so no need to resubmit. It'll just be a few more weeks before the closed beta goes live. So what does all this mean? Let's take a look in more detail regarding the release, roadmap, and reasons for removing the beta. All in all, I think this update has done a good job of providing information and explanations that make sense to the community, so kudos to the developer. So let's get into it. What's in the release and what is in the roadmap? Well, they're one and the same for the most part. As stated earlier, the game will be fully released on June 3rd of this year, just a few months away. This will not be an early access release, but a proper game release of a full product with additional features that enhance the gameplay experience rather than fix it, which is pretty cool. So what can we expect to be included for release? Let me tell you what, it is a nice list. First off, we have two new game modes, Endless Mode and Campaign Mode. With Endless Mode, this means no time limits. More specifically, we'll see this from a player's perspective in two ways to play, uh, one of which is a true sandbox mode, effectively keep going if you can and keep on expanding. The second will be focused on challenges where there will be massive sector spanning goals to achieve before the turn limit is reached. I'm very excited personally about the second option as challenges are something that keep me coming back into other games long after I've explored all the other content. It is a fun way, in my opinion, to keep the game fresh and keep touch with the player base, which is pretty cool. The second mode is the campaign mode, which is going to be scenario driven with some twist to the mechanics of the game related to the scenarios that you're playing. I'm very curious to see how this works in practice, but again, it's a nice touch to see this implemented as it can be built upon later by official expansions and player run content. Speaking of which, the notes in the update indicate that two scenarios will be present at launch with post launch updates providing others. Later on, we'll also talk about mod support, which should plug into the campaign feature. If I understand the community well, I think they'll be excited about this. Other updates include an overhaul to the tech system, effectively balancing some aspects of the game to help with progression and overall ease of understanding for new players while adding to the depths of ways you can play the game. We'll also see ranked maps, which are preceded maps with unique rules where players can compete twice a week to get a high score. Uh, this is very similar to what you see with other games I cover on this channel, such as Wreckfest, where they have daily, weekly, and monthly challenges. This is another feature I think will keep me coming back multiple times a week and is crucial 
for the long-term success and well-being of this game. Additionally, there will be more content in terms of random events, mission types, technologies, sector quirks, and replayability features to ensure each playthrough is, you know, is never alike. Even more so if you want to increase the difficulty options for those that want more challenge in their life. Lastly, there are lots of UI improvements and polish to round the game out and get it ready for launch. It already looks really good, so I'm really excited to see what launch day brings. I'm very, very stoked about that. So this is all well and good, but what about post-launch updates? What about post-launch activities? Mostly what we have access to here in this update is the original vision that the developer had for Slipways as a game, mainly that it would include an ambitious campaign with every scenario introducing a new big twist in mechanics or obstacles that were to be overcome. More or less, they ran out of time to get the campaign uh, included at the level of fidelity and depth that they wanted, so they're focusing on ensuring that the starting scenarios and the rest of the campaign are complete as well as all the other features of the game are included. There is a strong desire here by the developer to get the completed, launch-ready game into players' hands by June 3rd and release the additional campaign scenarios and modding support as free and regular updates post-launch, roughly in monthly intervals. This, in my opinion, really is exciting to hear as it shows there will be continued support for the game after it launches, and it's already in a very stable state. This is very, very exciting. So lastly, we come to the beta being delayed. This is where there may be some disappointment for fans of the game, especially those that played the demo available during the Steam Festival in February. There aren't any ulterior motives here that I can tell for the delay other than the features that the developer wanted to showcase and test wouldn't be ready until a few weeks later than expected. Effectively, I get the sense they wanted to have a solid beta a little later than deliver a flawed one earlier, you know, and not get the feedback needed to finalize the game for the June 3rd launch date. That's the whole purpose of the beta, is to make sure that it is launch ready and that features are working as intended. So it, it's expected, I get that. What will be awesome about the closed beta though, is that you will be able to try out all of the new game modes except for the ranked maps. This is gonna be very, very cool. And we're gonna be covering those here on this channel to give you a sneak peek of what they are and how they work. We know you're excited for the game, so we'll help you scratch that curiosity itch before launch, no worries. And if anything changes to impact that, I'll also let you know. For those that are curious what the beta sign-up form looks like, you know, we're scrolling that through right now. The link can be found below for your convenience in the description of this video or over on the main Slipways webpage, or yet again, even within the Steam News Update article if you wanna go find that as well. We have that shown here for you just so you can kind of get a glimpse of what that looks like. It's just a few questions, a submission, and you're added into the queue for selection. So this has been a bit of a deeper dive into the update that went out a few days ago. If you want to discuss this update in more detail, please head on over to the Slipways Discord, link in the description below, or chat about it with me here in the comments section down below. As always, I've been your host with the most, The Chronic Toast. And is it May yet? I'll see you next time. Have a good one.